They may be gone, but for how long? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 extinct animals scientists want to resurrect. For this list, we're looking at species that researchers consider good candidates for de-extinction in the near future. Though there has been talk of bringing back dinosaurs by reverse engineering chickens, we'll be excluding it as the resulting creatures wouldn't represent a specific dinosaur species. Also, though the possibility of resurrecting Neanderthals has been put forward, we'll be focusing on non-hominids for this list. Number 10. The Irish Elk When you think of Ireland, what comes to mind? Beautiful landscapes, pub culture, ancient ruins? It's a destination with a lot to offer, but wildlife isn't exactly at the top of the list. Once upon a time, however, the Emerald Isle was home to one of the world's largest breeds of deer, the Irish Elk. The fact is, the archaeological record is full of evidence that our ancestors lived alongside and interacted with these giant mammals for millennia. But what happened when they did interact, when humans met this megafauna? Did we perhaps love them to death? Or is it possible that the Megaloceros simply lived too large? Though their remains have been found in the bogs of Ireland, this impressive creature's habitat extended to Siberia. Also referred to as the giant deer, they're thought to have gone extinct roughly seven to 8,000 years ago. The demise of the Megaloceros seems to be ultimately about timing. During their heyday in the Pleistocene Epoch, they thrived in extremely cold environments, often living through periods of glaciation followed by slight warming. But in the late Pleistocene, as the climate started to change, Megaloceros populations became increasingly restricted to modern-day Russia. And though experts say their numbers were likely always low, well-preserved remains are discovered fairly regularly, making the Irish elk a solid candidate for resurrection via cloning. Number 9. The Gastric Brooding Frog Well, that name is certainly a mouthful. And mouthfuls are something this species was all too familiar with before their extinction in the 1980s. You know how little kids will often describe pregnant women as having a baby in their tummy? Well, with the gastric brooding frogs, the sentence applies literally. This frog swallowed its fertilized eggs. The females of this remarkable species swallow the fertilized eggs, which, over the course of six weeks or so, hatch into tadpoles and develop into little frogs, all in the mother's stomach. Sadly, this species collapsed under the stress of pollution and habitat loss, among other factors. We've lost a whole family. That's a big chunk of the global genome gone. I'd like it back. The second reason is that we killed these things. But given that this was a recent extinction, somatic cell nuclear transfer cloning seems promising. Researchers have managed to successfully clone embryos, suggesting that full-grown frogs are not too far off. What we did is something called somatic cell nuclear transplantation. We took the eggs of a related species, a living frog, and we inactivated the nucleus of the egg. We used ultraviolet radiation to do that. And then we took the dead nucleus from the dead tissue of the extinct frog, and we inserted those nuclei into that egg. Number eight, the stellar sea cow. Just look at these adorable creatures. This lumbering mass of a marine mammal is the manatee. Three species of manatee exist and can be found in coastal waters and rivers. Don't you think they deserve a second chance? Closely related to manatees and dugongs, these peaceful creatures, which could measure up to 30 feet in length, were sadly hunted to the point of extinction. There have been alleged sightings as recently as the 1960s, but most people agree with the declaration of extinction that was made in 1768, just 27 years after Europeans took notice of them. With aquatic animals, the likelihood of finding preserved specimens is unfortunately next to zero. But hope isn't altogether lost. Given the close genetic similarities between dugongs and stellar sea cow, researchers believe they might be able to resurrect the latter by reverse engineering the genetics of the former. A major part of the conservation area is a marine protected area in the region with the densest population of dugongs. Number seven, the Baiji. Speaking of aquatic creatures who deserved better, how about this more recent tragedy? Smaller than their saltwater relative, but no less intelligent or playful, Baiji dolphins were one of five known species of river dolphins found around the world. The Baiji was the only member of an entire mammal family. It diverged from all other whales and dolphins over 20 million years ago. Thousands of them reportedly used to swim in the Yangtze River. They even had a place in Chinese folklore and were collectively thought of as a goddess of protection among those who made their living on the water. The Baiji was one of the world's few true river dolphin species. It had very highly developed sonar and very reduced vision because the Yangtze is very murky and full of sediments. Unfortunately, the population went into sharp decline with China's industrialization. 
Preservation efforts were made in 2001, but it was too late. The first dolphin surveys in China were conducted in the late 70s and early 80s, and by this stage already the population had fallen to only around 400 animals. And by the end of the 20th century, there were possibly only 13 wild dolphins left in the Yangtze. Given how recently the extinction occurred, however, Baiji could prove a viable candidate for resurrection via a number of methods. Number 6. The Didacurus We might not be able to resurrect an Ankylosaurus anytime soon, but we'd settle for a Didacurus. This impressive creature is estimated to have gone extinct 7 to 8,000 years ago. Like its fellow creatures of the Pleistocene epoch, Didacurus was built to live in a tough environment. Its closest living relative is the armadillo, but Didacurus dwarfs its descendants by a substantial margin. These are ancient relatives of the armadillo, yet they weigh almost 300 times as much. It's estimated that they weighed an average of 3,100 pounds and measured just shy of 5 feet in height and 12 feet in length. Their spiked tail clubs alone can weigh 40 kilos, as much as a cannonball. It'd take quite a bit of effort to resurrect this ancient armored mammal, but hope persists of finding remains in a cool, dry area where the elements may have preserved usable genetic material. Number 5. The Moa In 1976, under Honeycomb Hill on the South Island, forestry workers discovered a portal into New Zealand's ancient past. Though lizards might look like the closest living ancestor to dinosaurs, that honor actually goes to various types of birds, including chickens. And so, with that fact in mind, the MOA begins to seem like a solid stepping stone along our never-ending quest to make Jurassic Park a reality. Come on. Come on, little one, come on. Come on, then. Come on, then. Very good push. The term MOA actually encapsulates nine known species of large flightless birds that once roamed modern-day New Zealand. The largest among them, Dinorus novi zealandii and Dinorus robustus, could reach heights of 12 feet when they fully extend their necks. 3,000 years ago, in the leafy green forests of New Zealand, the big beady eyes of a giant locked onto what would be its final meal. The giant in this case was a North Island giant MOA, a bird that stood three meters tall and its quarry was a tasty fern. That's a full three feet taller than the largest ostrich. Given that it only died out several hundred years ago and DNA is readily available, the MOA is considered a top contender for de-extinction. Number 4. The Thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian Tiger Native to Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea, this eye-catching marsupial was only declared extinct in 1936, when the last known thylacine, Benjamin, died in captivity although there has been the occasional alleged sighting in years since. The thylacine looks a bit to most people like a dog, or maybe like a tiger because it has stripes, but it's not related to any of those. It's a marsupial. But given that they were scarce even before the arrival of the British, even if a few Tasmanian tigers did manage to survive in the wild, their numbers were clearly too low for successful recovery. Then, unfortunately, the next sad part of the thylacine story is that Europeans arrived in 1788. De-extinction efforts began in 2008, and in 2017, researchers completed a full nuclear genome. At the current rate, thylacines could live again as early as 2027. We would hope that we'll be able to get that DNA back into a viable form, and then much like we've done with the Lazarus Project, get that stuff into an egg of a host species. Has to be a different species. What could it be? Why couldn't it be a Tasmanian devil? Number three, the saber-toothed cat. Fans of the Ice Age franchise, this one's for you. You don't need this aggravation. Give me the baby. I can track humans down a lot faster than you can. But if we do manage to resurrect the saber-toothed tiger, please don't trust it to babysit your infant child. I've eaten things that didn't complain this much. Also known as the Smilodon, this prehistoric mammal was a fearsome predator during the Pleistocene epoch. Like so many of its contemporaries, however, it went the way of the dinosaurs. We can't say with certainty why it died out, but all signs point to the scarcity of big game resulting from climate change. But how could changing vegetation be linked to the extinction of a carnivore like the saber-tooth? While the change didn't affect the female and her cubs directly, it did affect their food supply in vital ways. It died out some 10,000 years ago as part of the quaternary extinction event. But if sufficient DNA is found, it could return to the hunt. Speaking of big cats, Caspian tigers and the American lion are both potential candidates as well. Number 2. The Dodo Ancient armadillos the size of small cars, ferocious predators, 12-foot-tall birds, 
a lot of these resurrection contenders come with a notable intimidation factor. Now don't fall in! If you do, you will definitely... Intruder! Intruder! Ah! Burn and die. They're the sort of animals you'd be terrified to hear had escaped their enclosures. The dodo, on the other hand, is kind of an ideal choice. Not only is this flightless bird non-threatening, but it famously also had almost no fear of humans. In Dutch art, the dodo is portrayed as a fat, clumsy, absurd species, the butt of jokes. It often appeared in fantastical landscapes such as this one of Orpheus taming animals with his lute. It had become a mythical species on par with a griffin and phoenix. And though this might come as a surprise, it's not hard to source the necessary genetic materials for dodos. The genome has already been sequenced, and it's got a close relative in the Nicobar pigeon to help with the cloning process. If there's one creature you should bet on making a comeback, it's the dodo bird. The dodo has this kind of awe about it. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Pyrenean Ibex. The giant short-faced bear. Aurochs. The quagga. The passenger pigeon. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Woolly Mammoths You have beautiful eyes. This really feels like the holy grail of potential resurrections. Woolly mammoths roamed the planet for about 250,000 years. The last holdouts vanished from Siberia about 10,000 years ago. The idea of being able to see a woolly mammoth on safari in a wildlife preserve is like something right out of a sci-fi novel. Most current efforts focus on creating elephant-mammoth hybrids, but as with many of the entries on our list, this raises considerable ethical dilemmas due to questionable prospects for survival. Nonetheless, the necessary material is there. And one of their biggest goals? Bringing back the prehistoric woolly mammoth from the flesh of perfectly preserved specimens buried in northern Siberia. In 2013, a nearly complete 40,000-year-old mammoth, now named Buttercup, was found frozen in the New Siberia Islands. This specimen was even able to offer up blood samples, which scientists are confident can be used to source living cells. As if that's not exciting enough, there's similar potential for the woolly rhinoceros. The deep snow is a particular problem for the woolly rhinoceros. This young female is desperately searching for food. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.